In nature, there are fixed limits for summer and winter, day and night, and these limits give the year its meaning. But in limitation, we must observe due measure. If a man should seek to impose limitations upon his own nature, it would be injurious. Unlimited possibilities are not suited to man. If they existed, his life would only dissolve into the boundless. If he rightly understands his limitations and does not go beyond them, he accumulates an energy that enables him, when the proper time comes, to act with great force. Discretion is of prime importance in preparing the way for momentous things. These are words from the 60th hexagram in the ancient Chinese I Ching, or Book of Changes, by Richard Wilhelm, translated by Carrie F. Baines, with minor modifications by me. It seems to me that this hexagram is about the relationship between structures and limitations and that which they serve to limit or contain. And perhaps it's about being mindful in your awareness of structure and limitations and your relationship with them. And as you can feel from the quoted passages, the original text suggests that limitations are prudent and necessary. But at the same time, there is an aspect of nature, and of each of us, that is not limited. Our higher natures are boundless and cannot be contained. So there's an aspect of this 60th hexagram that speaks to transcending limitations to the magical dimensions of life. I need to confess that I have a hard time accepting limitation. I've often been frustrated in the past because to me, there's so much that we swallow about life, so much that we accept, so much that we resign ourselves to and compromise about. We accept so much as limitation that, from my perspective, is not necessary. In my mind, there's so much beauty and innovation waiting to be birthed into our reality that would be so easy to bring into form if we would all just drop all the shit that's weighing us down. So you can feel that my life, especially over the, the last few years, has been an oscillation between the dream world of my imagination and the real world we are living in. And one of the challenges I face, and that I believe that we face, is realizing structures and systems that allow and support the new reality that's coming, rather than structures that are riddled with fear that inhibit the light. Don't get me wrong, many of our structures are brilliant, and many of them have truth and light as their essence. Political structures, religious structures, economic structures, social structures, many of these were born with good intentions. 
but it seems to me that over time, many of them have become obscured by so many things. But all those things, mostly, distill down to just one thing, fear. Many systems that were born from positive intention are now serving to keep us afraid. They're perpetuating the old, and some of these structures have become so big and so complicated and so cumbersome that no one knows what to do about them. We don't even know if it's possible to remake them or take them down. In the gene keys synthesis, the energy of this 60th gene key moves from the shadow of limitation to the city of justice, and it's the path of realism. Richard Rudd articulates that the law of all form is that no structure can last. Each and every one of them comes programmed to eventually decline and die. Many of us don't want to hear that or face that fact. The 60th shadow of limitation concerns the human over-reliance on structures and the consequent death of something very special indeed. Magic. While magic is spontaneous, highly mutative, and unpredictable, the 60th shadow's single purpose is to control the flow of magic of life and to prevent anything original from occurring. So you see, this is precisely what I expressed earlier in this contemplation when reflecting on my own experience. It feels to me that many of the structures of man that we are subject to today have become so burdensome and heavy that they inadvertently prevent magic and innovation and evolution from being realized in our experience. The 60th shadow creates an over-attachment and over-reliance on form instead of highlighting the indwelling spirit of new ideas. The 60th gift of realism is the ability to balance youthfulness and wisdom, idealism with structure. It's about creating and using structures, whether they be physical or social or mental or emotional or political structures, to serve our expansion and evolution. It's about using structure to transcend structure. Some who hear this contemplation may find it curious that this gift is named realism. That's because our culture doesn't suggest that realism includes magic. Said differently, we don't tend to believe in magic or that magic is real. But realism in its truest sense must include magic. We know from modern physics that all matter is made up of vibrating energy fields, and therefore all the structures that we perceive in our material reality to be solid are actually more like illusions. Solid matter is actually made of vibrating fields of energy and light. Everything in creation is truly magical. I am influenced by this 60th gene key, as it is the energy of the SQ sphere in my gene key's Venus sequence. It is said that those of us with this gift have the ability to understand how structures are required that can support and sustain new energy and ideas coming into the material world. 
It's the ability to work with the existing laws and limitations and traditions and introduce change through them rather than in spite of them. And the SQ in the Venus sequence represents your spiritual quotient. It's one's ability to remain connected to the spiritual heart of life. It's calculated by the position of the planet Venus, 88 degrees or about three months before your birthday. And the SQ, it said, governs our mythology, the unconscious contours of the longing of our souls to return home. So, contemplating the SQ is a journey of retrieval and recovery of the eternal flame of unconditional love inside each of us. I have more to contemplate with regards to my relationship with existing structures as conduits for change, but the idea of a real, magical life feels like an inspiring mythology to me, for sure. And let me be clear, I have no desire to be caught up in fantasy. What I'm talking about is living with an awareness of the real magic of life. When I was a kid and I played pretend with my brother and our neighbors Brandon and Daniel across the street, I always wanted to play the role of the wizard in the story the one who could use magic to protect and uplift everyone. Then I grew up and had the idea of magic beat out of me by life. Still though, characters like Yoda and Gandalf and Galadriel are always the ones I resonate with. In many ways, it feels like I'm growing young again in recent years. Maybe the truth is that the magician was always there inside me, waiting to be re-accepted and embraced. My encouragement to all of us with this contemplation is to always remember the spirit of magic and wonder in life, and to encourage our children to not lose sight of the magic. We need to continue to encourage our children to not feel limited by the world we're bringing them into. All the while, we need to continue to work on any systems or structures we have in place that are inhibiting their magic. In this way, I know that we'll find a way to bring the magical dimension of life back into the real world. I'll close out this contemplation with some delicious poetry from Roald Dahl. Above all, watch with glittering eyes the whole world around you, because the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely places. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it.